Hey, do you want to build a stronger family, create a better life? Well, that's what Divorce with Heart is all about. It's a show where I guide you along your divorce and co-parenting journey using the heart's wisdom, intuition, and legal expertise. So sit back, take a deep breath, relax. My name is Gina DiPrima. Let's get started. Hello. All right. So this is going to be a bit of a feisty episode, I think, because that's just the energy that I'm feeling right now around this topic. This is the topic of why settle? Why should I settle? Because let's face it, if, if you're in if you're in the courts, okay, and it doesn't matter if you're in the courts for a custody matter and you're talking about how you're going to share time with your kids and parenting schedules and or maybe it's money and it's child support or if you're in court and you're, you know, talking about your divorce and everything that comes with that, which may or may not be kids, but usually there's a lot of financial stuff that comes with that. You could be looking at spousal support, which might be called maintenance or alimony, depending on where you are. But, but you know, there's payment, there's money, financial gain, financial loss that happens. Financial, well, what was it say? <laughs> maintenance, child support, <laughs> division of property, all of your assets. I mean, all of this stuff is happening. So it doesn't matter if you're in a custody battle. It doesn't matter if you're in a divorce battle. It doesn't matter if you're in court, okay? If you are in court, you are going to be faced with having to decide, are you going to settle or are you going to fight? Are you going to settle or are you going to fight? And and it's going to come up multiple times because that's how the process is designed. The process is designed to get you in. You make your allegations against each other and you kind of like fight, fight, fight a little bit, negotiate a little bit, back and forth a little bit. Everybody's trying to get what's best. And ultimately, if you can't reach an agreement, i.e. settle, if you can't reach an agreement, and the court just gets sick of you or you've reached whatever, you know, standards and goals they may have, internal measurements for how quickly a case should be resolved and moved, you know, in and out and through the court system. If you've gotten to that point and you don't have an agreement yet, well, now you will finally, finally have your day in court. That day in court, the day everybody wants, you know, where you see yourself on that witness stand and you're just feeling vindicated or you're defending yourself and you're attacking the other person, whatever it is. That's what people want when they when they don't settle. Maybe not always. Again, I can already feel it. Some people will be offended by what I'm saying. I'm never talking about everybody, but I am talking from my experience and I'm talking about, you know, what I see generally majorities. Okay. So that's what happens. That's how the system's designed. Make your allegations against each other, throw your mud, see if you can work it out, see if you can agree. If you can't agree, then you got your right to have a trial and then a judge, somebody else is going to make the decision for you. Okay. So again, why settle? Why settle? There's a lot of good reasons, a lot of good reasons why you should settle. I probably don't have enough time here to get into all of those reasons why you should settle and why it's a good idea to settle, but I'm going to try to get into some of the most important. And what I believe is the most important thing to consider when you are faced with that, should I settle? Should I keep going? Should I have a trial? Is what's your future look like? What does your future look like? Because that decision that you make in that moment or in those moments when you're asked to make concessions and when you're asked to negotiate and reach agreements, those decisions that you make in those moments, those decisions are going to impact your future. Hands down, 100% of the time, they're going to impact your future. So what kind of a future do you want? What does it look like? Okay, because Fighting, going to a trial, and making that decision not to settle, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that no matter how bad you think your divorce case or your custody battle has been up until that point, no matter how much anger and hatred and animosity and resentment you think that you hold for each other at that point, 
Okay, how much blame and shame and all that that you have, all the arguing you've been doing, I guarantee you that if you go forward and you have that trial, that stuff doesn't get better, doesn't get better. Now, can I guarantee you it's going to get worse? I don't know. I'm kind of conservative when I guarantee things. I'm not a risk taker, I guess. Can I almost guarantee you? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you want to know why? Because sometimes that trial becomes a show. And sometimes in that trial, everybody has an agenda and you think you had something to prove before or he had something to prove before. Guess what? When you turn that on, when you've got a judge sitting there listening to the proof, weighing you, looking at you, and I mean weighing your credibility, not your physical weight, but, you know, examining you, when you've got lawyers questioning you and thinking that you need to perform, you need to prove yourself, you need to prove yourself to the other lawyer that, hey, you're not such a jerk after all, and it's your client that's the idiot, right? There's all these motives and all these agendas and all these other things that come out, and they come out in ways that are multiplied, multiplied by 10. And these are not the good things that are coming out. This isn't, you know, memories of the vacation you took together or Disney World or, you know, the time that he surprised you with dinner, you know, or the time that, you know, he did the laundry. These aren't the good things. That's not what this is. This isn't the time where you're going to hear, usually, anyways, what an awesome, incredible mother you are. You might get some of that because that would just make good trial sense for most people, but that's a side note, you know, but you're not going to get what you think you need to hear emotionally. You're not going to get that. What you're going to hear is all the negative stuff, all the negative stuff thrown around, amplified because it's like a show and everybody's got to win. They got to win favor. They got to save face, right? They got to feel like it was worth it at the end of the day. So that doesn't come from a place of kindness or forgiveness or of sharing of good stories. That comes from a place of building up the negativity. So why settle? Think about that. (laughs) Think about that and think about it hard. Because like I said, will I guarantee that your future will be worse, that your parenting after a trial will be worse? Can I 100% guarantee that? I can't 100% guarantee that. Am I willing to say, you know, it's probably very, very, very likely, highly likely, 90, 95% likely? Yeah, I think I'd go that far. I really do. I really do. And that is the number one reason why you settle. That's why you make concessions. That's why you bite the bullet on some things. That's why. Because you try to preserve what you can. You try to preserve Whatever kind of common ground, little grounds that you might have, you know, a way where you can communicate, you preserve basically on some level, any level being on the same page when you reach an agreement. And that's the weight and the value of an agreement. And guess what? (laughs) It doesn't mean if you decide to reach an agreement and settle that you're a sucker. (laughs) Okay? It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that you're getting taken advantage of. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that it's unfair, that it's unjust, you know, or you're a loser, all of that stuff that might go through your head, you know, or you should have fought harder. It doesn't mean that. It means that you're choosing something that's more important to you than any of that kind of stuff. Okay, any of that. And that's really just surface ego talk anyways. But you're serving something that's of more importance and that's your future. And that's the value of preserving some, some semblance or some, you know what, it's a better way to describe it, I think would be preserving a seed, a seed from which a brighter future can grow. Okay, where you're, who's going to be your ex-husband, right? How your husband now, your ex-husband on your side can still be a good father and not go to pick up the kids at the house with his, you know, a pit in his stomach and, you know, his his heart, you know, whatever, jumping out. You get what I'm saying. Heart stopped. Like you don't, you don't want him 
coming to your house all stressed out, full of anxiety because of the relationship with you. You don't want them in that state spending time with your kids. This is why you plant these seeds so that in the future you can both be better parents and better to each other because who benefits the most out of that, of course, are your children. And if you don't have children, I still say, I still say the same thing. What kind of future do you want to have? Because it starts there with that decision. Why settle? Should I settle? That's where it starts. If you don't have children, I still guarantee you what you do, those decisions that you make in those moments are going to affect the rest of your life. You might think, why? Who cares? I never have to see him again. I never have to deal with her again. Why? Because, because when you hold negative feelings in your heart, they affect you. It doesn't matter if you're holding them in your heart with respect to somebody who you don't necessarily have to deal with one-on-one anymore. It doesn't matter. Your body on a physiological level can't tell the difference. Your mind can't tell the difference and your heart can't tell the difference. You'll hold that energy with you. That's why your future still makes a difference in that moment, even if you don't have kids, because it will affect who you are going forward. You can come out of that trial with new fears, new anxieties, right? New things to be pissed off over, new things to hold inside, new ways to guard up your heart so you don't have a meaningful relationship in the future. (laughs) So there you go. (laughs) Was that a rant or what? That is right there in a nutshell in a nutshell, the number one reason, the number one reason, and you can see how deeply I feel about this, why you should settle or think about it really hard. Think about your future and what your future looks like and what kind of future you want to have, and then track it back to should you agree or should you go forward and continue to fight and what's going to happen and think about the seeds that you're planting in that moment because they'll bloom. They're going to bloom into something, (laughs) okay? You get to decide what that something is. Now, why else? Why else should you settle? Well, because you never, ever, 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 ever really know, really know what the outcome is going to be. You can guess. Your attorneys can guess. They can be pretty confident. They can, you know, have good reason to state the things that they're telling you. But at the end of the day, when you go to a trial, you are giving up all of your power, all of your control, all of your right, all of your authority to decide your own fate, your own life, how things are going to run in your family. You give it up and you're giving it to one person, one person in a black robe. Okay? One person. And that person doesn't know you. They don't know your family. They don't know your children. They don't know your history. They don't know all of the ins and outs. And they never will. They never will. Okay? And, by the way, that person in the black robe, the judge, they are just that. They're a person, just a person. And they got their own stuff going on too. They got their own lives, their own drama, their own things that they're dealing with, you know? And the reason why I say that is because just like all of us, okay, they have their moods (laughs) and you just never know. You never know. That's why you don't know what's going to happen in a case. Okay, you don't know what kind of mood your judge is going to be in that day. You just don't know. I have seen, I have seen it happen. I have heard about it happen often. In fact, this is common where you will, you will hear facts that are almost exactly similar to facts of another case. Same judge, you'd be, you know, think that they're the same case and a judge will make two completely different decisions on both cases. Or a judge will make a decision in the morning and then completely reverse him or herself in the afternoon. Okay, these things happen. These things just happen. It's reality, all right, because they're people. So why on earth, (laughs) why on earth would you give your power, your right, and your authority over your life to one person, 
one person in a black robe who doesn't really know you and will never really know you, at least not in the way that you hope or intend or think that he or she is going to know you, because that judge is going to know the evidence. And evidence, okay, evidence is not necessarily what you may or may not be thinking that evidence is. Two different things. I see this a lot in my practice where people think they have the strongest case, where people think they're going to win because of all of their evidence that they have. But when you dig deeper, you see there's a difference between evidence and what that means to a lawyer and to a judge and evidence and what that means to most people who are not lawyers and judges who are going through the breakup and the heartache. Because it's not hearsay stuff. It's not the stuff that you necessarily might think is so important. It's not the stuff that you might necessarily think is the smoking gun. And the reason why is because we have to follow rules of admissibility, rules of reliability, and we can't get all that stuff into your case. So when that happens, the judge doesn't even hear it and the judge doesn't even know it. You see, the judge makes decisions based on the proof and the things that come in and not everything that you might think is important or relevant or that means something is going to come in. It's just not because there's two completely different definitions for all of those things I just said, you know, relevance, reliability, okay, just different. There's the legal definition, the legal concept, and then there's more of the emotional layman's concept, and they're different. So why do it? Why do it? Think about it. And if your answer is notwithstanding everything that I just said, and you think, I don't mind giving up my power and control, I'm going to trust it over to this person in the black robe. I hope it's for a real good reason. I hope it's for a real good reason. And I say that because sometimes it is necessary. It is. Sometimes it's not you, right? Sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you're the, you're the one who's being responsible, or, or excuse me, I meant reasonable. You're the one who's being reasonable, okay? You're the one who's willing to compromise, but you're the one who's feeling forced into the trial, right? That happens too, and then you feel like you don't have a choice, and maybe you don't. So maybe in that situation, you do have to let the judge decide. So that's what I mean when I say ask yourself the question. And if it is the case that it just makes more sense to give up that power and control because you have to, then you have to. This is all about you getting clarity. Why settle? Why go to trial? These are the things to consider. There's more. There's way more to consider. But you know what? Those are the top important things. And that's where I just want to leave it for now, for today, because I really said a lot right there. I know I said it fast. That's what happens when I just get on a roll sometimes. So (laughs) you might want to listen to it more than once, okay? And really let that stuff sink in. Really digest it because you just never know what's going to happen at a trial. And when you sit down and you think about your future, and you think about what's going on, and you have an opportunity to agree and settle a case, it might just make sense. It might just make a lot of sense for you to do that, notwithstanding all the concessions that you feel like you may have made, notwithstanding that, notwithstanding that. And remember, (laughs) remember, remember this too. Remember karma. Karma is a bitch. I believe in it. You know, sometimes maybe you can't get the concession you want from the other side. Sometimes you just can't get them there, but you still know in your heart of hearts that that agreement you have on the table is the best you're going to get and it's still going to serve you better than a trial would. Then know that you still got karma. You've always got karma on your side. What comes around goes around. So if you're the one who's being the jerk and pushing things to a trial, and it doesn't really make good sense. Does You don't have a very good reason. It's out of spite. It's out of anger. It's out of hatred. If you're being greedy, right, maybe that's you. I hope not. I hope it's the person you're identifying with is the other side. <laughs> but if it is, think about what you're doing. Think about it. Think about that. I'm going to do a whole show on that, I think, you know, demands over child support and things like that and how how that impacts the future relationship that you have and you know the future 
parent that you're going to be dealing with. All right. So, okay, we'll do that next time. Sorry, that was such a rant. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know. Leave me a rating or review in iTunes. Come and join me in my Facebook group, Divorce with Heart. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Come back next week and be sure to visit my website at deprimalaw.com to book a call. Or let's connect on Facebook at Deprima Law, where you can join my group for more support. Please remember that the information shared is for general and entertainment purposes only, and that by calling in or messaging me, we are not creating an attorney-client relationship, and my advice is not intended to be legal advice. For specific legal advice, please contact a lawyer in your jurisdiction. show is brought to you by inflowradio.com, the best curated talk radio network for personal development, wellness, spirituality, and conscious business.